It's been a while since we went back to the dark times of Total War Attila, but today is the day we take the plunge and check out one of the most exciting mods for this best of games. Where Vanilla Attila takes place during the fall of the Western Roman Empire, today's mod jumps ahead a few hundred years to the dawn of Islam and the First Caliphate, a time of just as much turmoil, chaos and total war. And if you are as excited as I am about 634 Fire and Swords, which is an extension of the Rise of Islam mod, I really hope you leave a like and consider subbing to the channel. And now, 634 Fire and Swords. The early Middle Ages were times of massive upheavals in Europe and the Middle East. With the Western Roman Empire long gone, the Eastern Roman Empire had fully taken on the mantle of true successor, and Emperor Justinian's conquest had reclaimed full direct control of the East and much of Northern Africa. More than that, Justinian established so-called exarchates in Italy and Africa, essentially massive vassal states which were also under his leadership. Rome was therefore arguably in a better position than during the time of Attila, although things would take a turn for the worse in the coming decades and centuries. In Western Europe, we begin to see the formations of what would come to be the medieval kingdoms later on. The Franks have by now established a large foothold in Gaul, the Visigoths a massive kingdom in Iberia, and several tribes made their mark in Germania and northern Italy, along with them the Alemanni and the Lombards. In the north, the Vikings are beginning to stir, as the Danes set their sights in Britain, and on this island realm, kingdoms like Mercia and Wessex have formed, making ready for a battle royale unlike few others. But it is in the southeast where the coming storm takes form. In Arabia, a prophet recently united the tribes of the desert peninsula and formed a faith which would take its followers near the heart of Europe itself. The Islamic Rashidun Caliphate stirs, and it is on the cusp of its expansion that you get to take the reins and control the caliphs on their path to greatness. This is also partly why this mod is so interesting. As far as I know, there are extremely few games that cover the time period of the early Muslim Caliphate, so there's definitely a sense of novelty surrounding it. Additionally, this time period is still an age of large empires. Surrounding the Arabs is not only the might of the Roman Empire to its west and north, but to the east, the Sassanid Empire is still in charge of the rich and fertile Mesopotamian lands and extending into Persia. And the question of fertility is a big one here. You see, as our caliphate is based entirely in Arabia, things like food is rather scarce to say the least. The fertility in this region is the lowest possible, standing at 1 out of 5, which means that the only reliable food source we have comes from camel farms. This is also how Attila's awesome base game mechanics make playing the Muslims that much more exciting, as your bustling empire is in need of expanding outward if you are to feed your armies and people. The first question you have to ask yourself is which empire do you wish to fight first? As history would have it, we actually begin the game with two powerful armies, ready to go at any moment. We also begin with two vassal factions who are likely to join your wars. Now the Sassanid Empire is smaller than the Roman, but this makes it more concentrated and easier for its armies to defend itself. So while the Sassanids hold some of the most fertile lands in the world, I personally went westward at first. I attacked the independent Jassanids as I entered Palestine, in a battle which saw the first Muslim incursion outside of Arabia. Now the way towards Roman Palestine laid open, and even though I spent some time preparing my armies by raiding their territories for food and gold, larger Roman armies were far away, but once I attacked, there was no going back. An old vassal decided not to join my little invasion, which of course meant they had to be dealt with as well. A reserve army I had built in the east was used for this purpose, meaning I didn't have to waste my western armies. What really aided in my immersion was that once my invasion begun, the Romans really began to feel the discontent among their African provinces. A rebel faction rose in Egypt, meaning that Alexandria and the Nile was now cut off from the rest of the empire, and due to 634's awesome submod, which allows factions from the same people to join each other's empire, I was able to integrate this new Islamic faction into my own. The same thing happened in another province shortly after, and soon, I was completely surrounding Alexandria with armies. This was a fierce battle, but once again showcases why Attila is such an awesome base for mods like these. The graphics still shine, and whether we're talking unit models, the cities themselves, or the fires of war, it all looks and feels so epic. I bombarded Alexandria with catapult fire and siege towers, and once inside the city, my superior cavalry forces took care of the rest. And speaking of cavalry, the Arabs fight quite differently from the other major factions in the game, although they're not too different from the likes of the Sassanids, for example. Here we have an abundance of cavalry units, including horses and camels, and long-range units also form the backbone of these armies. Of course we have excellent infantry as well, but the harassing nature of the cavalry really is the main strength here. Especially is this a case for fighting in large open fields and deserts, as the Caliphate is even immune to desert attrition. This is a major boon when fighting in the home region or in the south as a whole, as there is quite a lot of sandy territory to cover here. Additionally, 
I'm personally not that used to fighting in desert landscapes or with fast moving armies, as I tend to play more European factions that are more infantry based. In this way, 634 really incentivized me to try something new, and the feeling of changing things up a bit is actually really cool. With Alexandria conquered, Upper Egypt laid open, and we finally came into possession of lands equally fertile as the ones in Mesopotamia, securing a very good food source for our people. Of course, there's more to this caliphate than just war and food. There's also the matter of religion, as a big part of Rise of Islam is religion of Islam itself. Again, the base mechanics of Attila come into play here, as the game allows for both the use of religion and the adoption of new ones, as long as it's present in a large enough segment of your population. This mod further amplifies the effects of religion, so when multiple religions are present in a settlement, public order will drastically decrease, depending on the amount of followers. Seeing as Islam is a tiny religion in comparison to the neighboring ones then, this raises the importance of building faith-based buildings, like mosques, or indeed the use of agents like the Imams. The Imams especially are extra powerful agents here, as you can use them in provinces you don't own yet, and thus converting the population before you've arrived, building a foundation for decent public order. But they're just as important after a settlement has been conquered, both for conversion, but also for that immediate public order boost, as their level 3 allows them to positively influence your people while stationed in a province. Building mosques so you can recruit imams is therefore vital, as having rebellions when you should be the one invading can really set you back. While the Rashidun Caliphate is the main event here, 634 Rise of Islam really is all about the total conversion, meaning that every other faction has been given a grand sense of care as well. This time period serves many regions of course, so if you'd like to create a powerful Iberian realm as the Gauls, recreate the Roman Empire as the Exarchate of Italy, raid the British Isles as the Danes, create a powerful kingdom in the British Isles, once again unite Rome as the Eastern Roman Empire, or bring ancient Persia back to its former glory, it's all up to you. There's a remarkable number of factions to play here, and because Attila stretches over such a wide area, the variety in units and play styles is equally vast. I briefly mentioned it, but if you want an even better experience out of 634, then make sure to download some of the submods for it. I'm personally playing with a submod that introduces a supply system, which is just awesome and makes it important to keep your armies garrisoned before moving into foreign lands. Being supplied gives your armies a better fighting chance as well as integrity, and adds even more depth to the army management. The Join Empire submod is equally important for immersion, as I really love being able to integrate same culture factions into my own realm. I'm also playing with the English faction name submod, simply because I like being able to understand what the different faction names mean. In total then, 634 Fire and Swords, an extension of the Rise of Islam mod, is a really great mod that offers up a time period we rarely see. Playing as the first caliphate is exciting and fresh both in terms of the campaign and the battles, but if you're interested in other parts of the map, you have an entire selection of factions to choose from, which makes this mod very versatile indeed. I highly recommend checking out this mod right now, as you're sure to get yet another Attila experience you won't soon forget. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed my time with this mod, and found the uniqueness of the setting and factions really fun. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you leave a like, sub to the channel, and consider becoming a patron or a channel member. Make sure to join our Discord as well for more. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.